Hello, welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, with a very special and short video here with a nice package coming to me. And I have decided to wait on this until I uh, was able to um, devote the time needed to talk about this. Now, first of all, uh, this is a controversial um, item. This is a controversial topic. And uh, depending on who's seeing this video, some might think it's awesome and others might think it's horrible and horrendous and terrible. And I'm here to say to everybody that uh, I appreciate everyone's opinions and I do respect them. But, you know, I'm, I've made the conscious decision to do this and sh collect this type of an item and I'm going to stand by it. Uh, and I don't think that makes me in any way uh, a, b a bad person. But if you disagree, I, I respect your opinion. But so for those who don't know what I'm talking about, let's uh, let's go into this. This is actually a box with some more custom figures. Okay, custom reproduction figures, and it is something where uh, there has been a lot of, of. If you go onto any kind of Facebook group or any kind of um, discourse or things of that nature where you can actually get into groups about collecting and customizing and reproductions. There's a lot of opinions on this. The one side of it being that the reproductions that are of things that have never been made before is fine. Reproductions of things that maybe are full out customizations is fine. However, if you do a reproduction of a, of a vintage figure that's already been re released, even if it's a rare one, um, it's a it's a very bad thing even if you do put like something on the figure itself to indicate that it is a reproduction it is uh, considered to be uh, taboo and for some people uh, not some, something they don't do because and they think of it from a value standpoint if you're trying to sell I mean, uh, you know if the person is selling an item for very inexpensive that's a reproduction it's cool everybody understands that but then fast forward a hundred years and all the people involved in the transaction have passed on and now their relatives their or the next generation are now passing these things around and trying to sell off reproductions as original and i do get that argument i do i do understand that however the other side of the coin is that look the the ability to collect rarities prototypes unreleased figures all of that is basically an, an elitist thing for just a very small and it's like mainly single digits amount of people who have enough income to do that and that's great but for the rest of us who the vast majority of collectors that have limited income this is the only way to even come close to something like that so i understand it so without further ado i know you're tired of looking at a white box so let's get let's get this thing open i'm doing it upside down so you don't see my address okay and in it we've got two more white boxes okay Now, this was from, I believe, Smuggler's Den. So again, people have their own opinions about Smuggler's Den. Okay, now, some are gonna argue and say, you know, this is not bad because this is what they called, this was a never released, and a, a vintage figure that was never released in the Empire Strikes Back card. So anyone who's worth anything will be able to pick that out. Okay, there's also little telltale signs that um, the, you know, that this is, you know, that the weight of the card, while very good, is not exact to the weight of the original cards. So there's that as well. Okay, but this is an R3PO, which as you know, you can see by the photo, found his way into the, <coughs> in, in Hoth. And like other figures, it only has a blip on the screen. But I kind of feel as though this is something that says, all right, well, you know, that why they chose to have a Hoth Trooper or a, you know, alien character that was a blip on the screen and not another droid, especially considering that it is essentially a C-3PO mold that can simply be painted another color, is questionable to me. Okay, but there's R-3PO, okay, and it's got this nice little card, nice little bubble, unpunched card, very cool. And then if you look on the back, it's pretty much a standard uh, collect all 48. Obviously, this car, this character is not included in part of this, okay? Uh, because it's a vintage 
uh, it's a reproduction of a non-produced figure. So I guess this is this particular one will not upset too many people. My only complaint about it is that it says Kenner, and sometimes there are places that will do reproductions and actually put the reproduction name on it. Now I do believe there's a reproduction somewhere on the figure's um, leg or arm or foot, or all right, but it would be good to put something here to know that it's a reproduction. Okay, only because the one area I see something like this getting thrown into a mix where it might, if somebody it were where it might uh, sell for more than it's worth, would be if uh, a person years from now decided to sell off an entire collection of vintage figures and was selling them at three hundred dollars a pop or some some crazy number like that, and they just put it, they inserted this as part of it. Okay, uh, you can tell by the outside here. This is really well done, but you can just tell by the by there's a slight fading on this, almost like a copy of a copy type thing. So maybe that's on purpose. Uh, but yeah, all the trademarks on the bottom are essentially uh, nothing about the, the 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 customizer who made it. So I would have appreciated that. It's not a big deal since this figure was never produced. So anybody who's trying to collect figures will should know that. But nonetheless, so. I, I think this one doesn't really dance around the um, doesn't dance around the controversy too much. But let's look at the other one. I'm gonna put this one here. All right, this is the one I think is going to kind of make people go. Whoa. All right, there it is. The man, the myth, the legend, the blue snaggletooth figure. Now. I currently own a blue snaggletooth figure, although I will say that I don't handle it. I put it in a little case and a, a display area and I leave it alone because the head is barely staying on. It's like wobbly, okay? But it is a very good reproduction of a snaggletooth, blue snaggletooth figure. Now, for those who don't know, blue snaggletooth is an extremely rare figure that was not released on a card. It was only released in a four pack of figures that was part of a Cantina Adventure set, kind of cardboard diorama playset. I believe it was a Sears exclusive, either Sears or JCPenney, I can't remember. And this customizer put, again, just same idea with uh, R3PO, R3 put this on a card, a never, never before existing card. Okay, um, but captured a very nice photo. I don't even think this photo is real. I guess the color has been photoshopped because I don't ever think he was, I believe the way the story went was that the figure itself was a blue, or was a black and white photo that Kenner had to make the figure. So once they realized when, when you know, so they made it tall, they just created a color jumpsuit and uh, they didn't see anything with hands or feet. So they gave him regular hands and go, go space boots. <laughs> And then once the movie came out and they realized that it was a shorter character with a different color, they reproduced it. I believe that is how the urban legend goes. So it was never released on a card. So on that sense, you know right away, any collector knows that this is not an original. This is a reproduction. But the figure itself, you're going to have to look and see. Um, I don't see anything on the figure you know, here. You'd have to look on the back of it to take it out of the package to see that it's a reproduction. Okay. Again, buyer beware make sure that you're you know this was an under hundred dollar purchase okay so this was not a hugely expensive purchase uh as a buyer i know that that's why it's um not real now you know not a not an original on the back again you can also see some telltale it's it's pretty much just a standard uh 12 or not not 12 back yeah 21 back card it's got a lot of the figures listed. There's a fading. You may not be able to see it. Here, there's there's the original. There's the next nickel tooth, the, the one that's more popular. There are not there are not uh, any you know, telltale signs that this is a reproduction. Okay. Um, yeah, also, oh, yes, there is. Right here. Smith Lord Creations. Okay. So, there we go. I'm trying to see. Was that on here, too? I did not see that on here. Again, I recognize very much so that there are people that really, really, really have a strong opinion about this. And I understand that. Okay. So I don't think this one's going to cause much of a flurry, but this one, 
the blue snaggletooth mite. Okay. Now, I am a supporter of people doing reproductions. I can do this. Oh, of course, I got the glare. Let me just, I want to do a little something here to, there we go. I am a supporter of artists doing, I look at this like an artistic um, endeavor. Okay, it's like buying um, Star Wars art, like on that you would hang on the wall or a, or, or a private Star Wars sculpture. Okay, that's kind of how I view these. And I see them as uh, in the same vein. Okay, I support the artists who do this. I do feel that, you know, Kenner is, I'm sorry, Hasbro is just starting to dip their toe in the water with the Mandalorian figures and with the, um, the board game exclusive figures like Grand Moff Tarkin and, and uh, Luke Skywalker Hoth pilot. Okay, but I do believe that there's a, there is a strong contingency of collectors out there that would love to see more of this type of thing come into, come into being. Okay, now I also understand, like I said, the other argument about people, um, you know, I know that someday I will no longer be around and either my daughter or I will, or maybe I'll sell it off before then and I will sell it as, you know, on my word, I will sell it as reproductions. But the person after me might try to pass it off. Not, not much you can do with this one because any collector who does any kind of research at all will know that this figure never existed in the original line. However, this figure did exist, so it's very easy to say, okay, I, uh, you know, I'm going to pull this one out. I'm going to sand off the Smith Lord creation thing on the bottom and say, this figure is now uh, an original figure. And I, and I do recognize that is true. However, there are other telltale signs. Okay. So you, the best thing I can say is people need to do their homework. All right. And again, um, for collecting something that you enjoy, that you love, it's, it's important to just do what you feel comfortable with. So I hope you understand that. I hope I don't lose viewers, but if I do, I understand. Uh, there will be more. There's more Smith Lord creation stuff coming. Um, I don't plan on collecting all of what he does, but I do. I have made a few purchases that are, and again, because it's a customized job, it takes a lot of time for it to get done. So that'll do it for this episode of Darth Tuba Stars Unboxing Show. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification button, all that jazz. Check me out on Instagram, Twitter at Darth Tuba, Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing page on Facebook. Um, if you want to support the channel, check out the Star Wars art that I have uh, for sale on Tee Public with shirts and hats and other things. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, may the toy, may the Force and the toys, whether they be original or reproductions, be with you.